Hello, everybody. Welcome to another visual novel. I know one of you is going to be super happy that I'm doing one of those. Uh, but this one's a real. This one seems fun. It's called Resident Lover. It's based on the cast from Resident Evil 8. And that just it seems silly enough to be worth a check out, you know? I, I've been looking at what people have been saying about it. Apparently, it's like actual good instead of just. You know, like, it's not just a meme like the KFC game. That's, remember the KFC dating game? I sure do. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'm gonna, this is just a demo. I think I said that already. Uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go and see what this is all about. It arrives one warm August evening. After you've come back from a quick grocery run, the sun is setting, turning everything inside the room ablaze. It's why your eyes are drawn to it. The golden envelope shines under the light coming through the window, almost blinding you with its glow. Dude, I'm gonna get invited to Hogwarts? It's dope! You set your groceries down on the kitchen countertop before approaching the envelope, pondering its mysterious arrival. Came from the birds, dude. Had you brought it in this morning and forgotten about it? But how could you have missed it? It's too eye-catching. The envelope is gold with the letter M imprinted into the heavy wax seal. Fascinating. It is... I wish they did envelopes like that still, the wax seals. Wax seals are so cool. Shout out to wax seals. Sam? Gillian? Sam! Gillian! You call out to your two roommates, but they're not here. They must still be at the movies for their date. Perhaps one of them saw the mail, the uh, late delivery of the day, and took it in. Or maybe they're dead. The front of the letter contains your name and the address of where it came from. <coughs> Hopefully I can pick up my cough there. Romania? Who could be sending you mail from Romania? You crack open the pretty seal, a bit of a pity you have to, but your curiosity wins out. Inside, there seems to be an acceptance letter and a brochure. The acceptance letter is printed on heavy and expensive paper, scented with something floral. You can't place the scent, but it makes your eyes flutter closed momentarily. It feels familiar, almost like Almost like home. You don't know why it feels like that, but open your eyes and put your head the thought as you skim the letter. Miranda's all-girls university would like to cordially invite you to be an incoming freshman in our school. Your eyes widen as you take in the contents of the letter and their implication. The school wants to offer you not only a position in their international students program, but also a fully paid scholarship. This this has to be a dream. What school would do that? This feels like a scam. Just right away. I won't trust it. You aren't even a traditional freshman. You had graduated high school and decided to take gap years before going to college. You wanted to travel the world, make some money, and take a break from education. Once you felt ready to go back to learning, you had sent out applications to schools, but none had offered you a good package. I hear that. So why is this university offering you so much? How do they know about you? Go in the brochure and analyze the photos there. Picture of students smiling, scenic spots on the campus grounds, bustling clubs and job fairs, campus exclusive events line the pages. The programs and courses offered all seem so enticing as well. This school seems real. And if this offer is too, you'd be a fool to reject free education. The scent of the letter wafts up your nose again, and you inhale deeply, feeling that nostalgia for something. What does it mean? Whatever it does, you know you'll find it at the university. So there's some like bigger mystery going on. That's that's fun. I have no idea what the implications are, but it's like I don't know. What if Marine's our mom or something? I, don't know. I think she's one of the options today, so hopefully not. Alright, 
Time to pack my bags. I'm going to Romania. Oh my gosh, that was a quick jump. One long flight later, a few hours with campus administration, and here you are. A newly indoctrinated student of Miranda's All-Girls University. You came here on a whim, but college is real. The beautiful and idyllic campus is full of students going about their day. Even though classes start next week, already so many people are here. You're filled with excitement at starting this new path of your life. This is the start of the college life you've always wanted. The only question is, where should you focus your energy? Do you dare try your hand, body and soul on creative pursuits? Do you forego your studies in favor of having fun, unforgettable experiences, making friends? Or do you want to give up your sleep and possibly your sanity in exchange for perfect grades? Uh, what will you focus on? Um... I mean, if we're gonna go based on real me, I would go art major. But I don't want to go scholar. That's that's not my style. It's between these two. I'm more with something more fun. I think social butterfly is calling to me more right now. But if this was real life, I would choose arts major because that's essentially what I did. The social butterfly. Studying? Going to classes? No thank you. I hear that. You're here to have fun and make friends. You want to be the student everyone on campus knows, whether for good or bad reasons, that is yet to be determined. Yeah. Join your roommates as you take the campus by storm and discover along the way that there is something sinister brewing at the university that you might have to take care of before it takes care of you. Are you happy with this choice, or do you want to consider the other options? Oh, that sounds exciting. I'm happy. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Can I not? Is this because of demo? Oh. The art major. The majority of students on this campus are enticed by this major. Some might even go so far as to call it the lifeblood of the university, but not all can handle it. Do you think you can succeed where countless others have failed before? If you're up for the enormous task, just remember... But the arts demand blood, sweat, and sacrifice. And if you can't give a killer performance, it might be your last. Alright. I guess we'll go with this. You decide you're going to be an art major. How that works out is entirely reliant on you and the choices you make. With your basic introduction classes picked out, you need one more class to finalize your schedule. Hmm. I have to choose an elective credit this semester. Which one should I do? Gee, I wonder which one. I guess we're gonna go theater. I used to act all the time in high school, but I have to dedicate myself to full stage productions here. Theater it is. Theater sounds fun. I like theater. Life is but a play, drama queen, act one, scene one. Oh, this art's so pretty. It's, it's so aesthetic. I don't even know what that means fully, but I'm right. After your earlier classes of the day are complete, you head across campus to find the theater. When you get to the building, your jaw drops open. The building looks like something straight out of a book on royalty. It stands tall, with a domed ceiling. The columns that support the arches are decorated with leaf and vine designs. There is a grand stone path that leads up to massive double doors and a small water fountain in front that gurgles quietly. The inside is even more impressive. With plush red carpeting and velvet red walls, the interior reminds you of Baroque's vampire's house. Ornate lanterns serve as lights, the dim glow making the place feel almost ethereal. Students mill around the area, searching for their classes. Some are suddenly in as entranced as you by this building, while those who have been here for years simply walk past, not sparing a second glance at the expensive oil portraits on the walls. The place is expansive, and you get lost trying to find your elective class. The class is being held in the auditorium, and when you finally find it, you push open the heavy wooden double doors. Light filters through, and you stand at the top, looking down upon the rows and rows of red seats. Students have filled the seats at the bottom, so you scurry down, gaping at the stage. It's massive, but empty, for now. You wonder what productions will take place here this year. It's probably going to be a high school musical again. It's always fucking high school musical. 
and a spark of youthful excitement hits you. High school, you would have loved to have acted on a stage like this. Instead, your school had to perform entire shows with a budget of $250 on a stage not much bigger than the length of a school bus. This stage was an entire country in comparison. You squeeze your way to the front row seat, to the front row, and sit through the theater orientation. The excitement makes you want to tap your feet against the floor. Or maybe it's just ADHD. Now you're really jazzed about being part of the team. And the way your professor speaks on the subject with such passion makes it even more exciting to be here. Man, I want to go in theater now, what the hell? <laughs> making such a good case. Screw dating vampires, I'm gonna go to Broadway, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many students in this class and so many options on how you can help out. What role should you fulfill in the general theater class? Tech? Work as an usher? Should try for the main cast of a smaller production. Um, can I do main cast? Since I've acted before, why not take to the stage again? Sounds like it'll be a lot of fun. But work, but it'll also be a lot of fun. After class ends, you decide to clear out the room and go find the bathroom. The theater is not that old. Yet it reminds you of those ancient places prone to being haunted by ghosts. Ooh. Something creaks behind you and you turn to see a black shadow walking quietly past. I guess we're gonna ignore that. You rush to the bathroom. When you're done, you head out or try to, but get lost in the confusing labyrinth of the backstage. That is when you hear arguing voices. Here, let me turn the volume down. Wait, no, the volume is right. Yeah, I can turn it down a little. That's when you hear arguing voices. Worried that someone might get hurt, you hurry over to help. The door with the symbol of a star on it is partially open. You spot the name Cassandra Dimitrescu on the glittering shape. The name rings a bell, but you can't remember why right now. Be quick, Sandra. We can't deal with you anymore. What do you mean you quit? We can't just all drop out. Auditions are coming up for the production, and you all need to try out for them. <sighs> this is exactly why we don't want to do this. You're literally bossing us around and telling us that we have to try for the main production. What if we want to do the smaller shows? Your mother may run this theater, but that doesn't mean you own us. We're dropping out of the acting troupe, and you can't stop us. Have fun running your production with no one joining. They storm out of the room, and you duck behind a conveniently placed column to hide from them. They're gone, you peer out. That sounded very bad. Without a cast, how would the main show go on? Now you remember who Cassandra is, the daughter of Professor Elsina, who happens to fund the theater and the shows. It's because of Alcina that Cassandra gets to pick and choose actors from the theater major to stage the productions. Every semester there is a big hubbub about it. You haven't seen one yet since you're new here, but you've heard the productions are next level. From who? And Cassandra's high position isn't unwarranted. Her performances are simply stunning. However, she can be quite the uh, diva, so to say. You hear soft sobs coming from inside the room and decide to intervene, even if it's none of your business. You find Cassandra sitting at her vanity, biting her bottom lip and trying not to so sob loudly. Are, are you okay? Uh, what was the voice? Who, who are you? She quickly wipes out her tears with the back of her sleeve and tries to score her features into more neutral ones. I'm a new student of this general theater class. I, I, I kind of heard what happened and I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to eavesdrop. I just thought someone was getting hurt and I came to help and... You're rambling now and you stop yourself. You shouldn't be listening in like that. I got lost. I thought you might need some help, but it seems I wasn't able to do much. If it helps, I'm sorry for what happened. They shouldn't have done that. What can you help me with? The crew quit on me. If they want to audition for the show, then how will I run the main production? Cassandra angrily wipes out a few stray tears that, es that escape her eyes. Can't you get other people to do it? They were all decent. They were all decent actors. Where will I find more on such short notice? 
She put her head in her hands. This is a disaster. It'll be a laughing stock. I'll never be able to act again. Every theater and student in the world will hear of this, and I won't ever be able to shut my face to producers and show directors ever again. She's being overdramatic. The situation isn't that bad. She just needs some motivation to get through this. It wouldn't do good to give up now. One time, the cast of my high school came down with the flu. Oh. It wouldn't do good to give up now. One time, the cast of my high school came down with the flu, and we only had half a cast open to show up. So, we all decided we'd play two roles instead of just one. Since we'd all been to rehearse a bunch of times, we ended up having more fun with it that way, and everyone loved it. A smaller cast, huh? Maybe, maybe I can do something like that. Something similar to play the 39 steps where all the roles are fulfilled by six actors. She stands up, revitalized and full of energy. This can and will work. She places a hand to her chest, shoulders held back and head held high. And that's the spirit. She's full of energy, the momentum of it sweeping you up too. And what show are you running? Romeo and Romeo and Juliet. I love that play. I did it in high school once. Perfect. Then you know what kind of vim we Then you know what kind of vim we need to get this show on the road. You want me to help? Sure. Why not? She turns her dazzling smile on you, and you are reminded why so many people are stunned by her acting. She's beautiful and charming and persuasive and Oh wow, you think you might have a bit of a crush on her already. Uh, sure, I can help. Probably to run an entire production wasn't exactly what you had in mind when you joined, but if Cassandra wants you on her team, how could he possibly say no? Excellent. Here's my phone number. She gives you her number and you put it into her phone. Into your phone. I'll have enough to run through the play and see if we can condense the roles of the actors into two to three roles. Then, I want to meet tomorrow at the cafe. We'll brainstorm and move from there and start advertising that we need new actors. There are plenty of students in the theatre major. If the ones I've gifted the opportunity to work on such high quality productions don't want to take it anymore, then I'll just give other people room to be stars. There's a joke about the acting strike in here somewhere, but uh, I don't. I'm not gonna make it. She tosses her hair over her shoulder before posing confidently with her hands on her hips. Then, she gives you a wink and a smile. So, don't be late to our meeting tomorrow, star. Sh sure. You stutter out. Her wink and smile, combined with her calling you a star, makes her stomach flip pleasantly. You bid her a goodbye and walk out of the building back to your dorm. Feeling like this wasn't real. You have one of the most popular students on campus's phone number. It's only day one, dang. You inhale deeply, uh... Oh, jeez. Is there a way to read back in? Uh, whatever, we inhale deeply. When that doesn't work, you let out a cheesy grin split out, split out on your face and let your right legs race through the campus, doing a little skip as you barely refrain from shouting out, I have Cassandra Dimitrescu's phone number. Romeo, Romeo, what art thou, Romeo? The cafe is surprisingly empty at this hour. Or maybe not so surprisingly, considering Cassandra has asked you to meet at 4 a.m. before it's even open. Oh, 4 a.m. That's a bold thing to ask someone to do. Also, that's some. Um, back there, that's one of the San Rio dudes, isn't it? I, that's, I always like that aesthetic. Also, that's Patrick. I didn't expect to see Patrick star in the Resident Evil game, but here we are. One, two, two, wait, it. that's probably or something. The two of you sit outside in the light dark of a dawn that's about to arrive. You are groggy eyed and you fail to stifle a yawn as you sit huddled in your hoodie. It's a bit chilly at this time, but Cassandra barely seems to notice it. She's dressed lightly for this weather, a mug of steaming hot coffee next to her. Is she a vampire? I'm pretty sure she is in the base game, but. <laughs> Seems like she's a vampire. Is that why she's wanting to meet us so early? Avoid the sunlight? Is there gonna be a twilight situation where she's gonna be like, 
You know who I am? I, I don't know where the scene went. There are papers spread out in front of her, along with a stack of books. You notice they seem to be a mix of literature and law books. Good morning. Good morning. A perfunctory greeting. She does not lift her head to look at you. She is engrossed in something she is reading, nibbling on the crook of her finger as she does so. Is that stress or from concentration? Or from the caffeine? You notice that there's an alarming amount of takeout coffee cups at her feet. All empty styrofoam. Uh, so what are we doing today? Why are we meeting so early? Cassandra looks up at Looks up at you at this. She blinks sourishly. Oh, eh? Anyway, you called me half an hour ago and told me to get here as soon as possible. And I did. I've been sitting here for ten minutes now. You trail off awkwardly, sounding a bit miffed that she made you get up this early. You are tired, and your previous enthusiasm for the project has died down with how early it is. Cassandra dives to the phone lying next to a half eaten bagel. She reads the time on her phone. Oh. Huh. I forgot that people actually sleep. She gives a small laugh to herself. Sorry, I lost track of time. There's just so much to do. Let's get started then. I think she's being serious. I think she's canonically in this universe also a vampire. She moves some books around and reshuffles her vampires. Reshuffles her papers. Is that what that said? I just, I just wordied there. Are you studying law? I thought you were a theater major. I'm actually majoring in both pre-law and theater. Oh wow, I can't imagine how much work both are. It's not that bad, I just don't sleep often. But who needs to sleep anyways when there's so much to do? She waves a dismissive hand before you can question the sanity of that statement. I looked through the script, and I thought we could condense the roles to 10, maybe 12 actors. Romeo and Juliet have to be their own, of course. So we need separate actors for them. Do you have any people in mind? I was going to send out an email to the department to ask about it. Obviously, I shall take the role of Juliet. I won't trust anyone else to play her. She squints her eyes thoroughly at you. Have you acted before? Uh, yeah, in high school. I mentioned previously that we did Romeo and Juliet. I also acted in... Cassandra cuts you off, excited. Excellent. You can be in the show, too. You go with this. Getting to act in a production for Cassandra, that's really a big deal. What role did you play? I was Romeo, actually. Cassandra puts a hand to her chin and looks over at looks you over. I can certainly see why. You've got handsome looks. You feel slightly warm at her compliments. Before you can thank her for them, she shoves some papers at you. I want you to read some of his lines for me. Now? Yes. You're not ready to be put on the spot like this, but you have to do this. You close your eyes, take a deep breath, and reach down into that part of you that becomes someone else. I have to cough. <coughs> Remember what it's like to be Romeo, to be desperately in love with someone. That painful longing, that slight maniacal dreaming and scheming to get what you want. The detachment to anyone or anything else that was not Juliet. Juliet is your world. Sounds fade away and senses narrow until only you and Cassandra remain on this entire campus. When you open your eyes, there must be something different in them, because Cassandra's brows go up. You rise from you rise up from your seat and come to stand by her, taking her hand in yours. You don't need the sheet. Romeo and Julia have been your senior show. It's still fresh in your mind after all this time. She speaks. Oh, speak again. Right, angel, for thou art as glorious to this night, being over my head, as is a winged messenger of heaven, unto the white, obtuned, wondering eyes of mortals that fall back to gaze on him, when he bestrides the lazy peas and clouds and sails upon the bosom of the air. <sighs> you finish and look for Cassandra's reaction. She recovers from her slight awe and stands up. Clasping your hand in hers, her eyes shine bright. Well, what do you know? Your acting is much better than I thought it'd be. Not as good as mine, of course, but no one can be as good as me. And there's some things to work on. I'll train you, naturally. 
so you can be much, much better. But I can work with this, and soon we'll have a show on the road. You want me to be Romeo? You're a bit overwhelmed by this. Yes. She nods her head sagely. There's something that you've brought to his character that I haven't seen in other versions before. I think we can capitalize on this and make a rendition of Romeo and Juliet that is different than most versions. When I say to production, it's not merely regurgitated work. It is art, reimagined and reinterpreted to tell something the story has never told before. You're in the you nod your head, kind of confused. Uh-huh. Cassandra's excited rambling continues. Perhaps this version could be a one-sided love, but Romeo is obsessed with Juliet and she does like him back, but she doesn't realize the depths of his depraved feelings and is forced to falsely poison herself to escape him, but actually ends up accidentally poisoning herself because it was too high a dosage. And Romeo, upon her prone form, her dead in the family guy pose, poisons himself to join her. The head is reeling at this. That's certainly one way to interpret that play. I don't hate it. But perhaps we can make it even that Juliet is the one who does love him fairly, so that she poisons herself and him, so that if she cannot have him in life, she can be with him in death. She's speaking so quickly, it's kind of hard to listen to her. Cassandra pauses herself here. Hmm. Those are a bit depressive. Maybe a happier vision would sit better with the audience. But they are coming to see something already lauded as a romantic tragedy. So a happy ending might actually make the audience dislike the product. You extract your hands from a tight hold. Alright. I'll let you brainstorm those ideas on your own. Just let me know when you need me. Cassandra. She jolts as she comes back to the present. Sorry, I'm speaking nonsense again, aren't I? I do love acting, so I tend to get overzealous with it. A lot of people are thrown off by it. I hope I haven't alienated you with it. She looks insecure, and you reminded how the entire cast left her because she was too dramatic and too demanding of them. You shake your head. I'm fine. I find it endearing. That comment seems to make her genuinely happy. She runs a hand through your hair to your cheek, cupping it momentarily. You are such a darling. You can fear you can feel your cheeks heating up the urge to blush, but thankfully she removes her hands before they can betray you. The cafe door opens behind you. You've they finally open for business, and the sound of it makes Cassandra's head whip to it, like an animal on the hunt. Coffee She exclaims and bounces on her feet. I'm gonna get some. Come in with me? Sure. The two of you- Oh, we weren't in? Okay. The two of you walk into the shop. It's nicely decorated inside and the food has- And it has food and drink menus hung up on the wall. Cassandra walks up to the barista with a smile. I'll have the usual. She then steps aside and turns to you. Pick a sack and coffee. Not me. It's the least I can do for- As thanks for you coming to speak with me. You approach the barista, Helena, and look at the menus. She gives you and Cassandra a knowing look. Walk of shame. Ex excuse me? A walk of shame? What's that? Seriously? You don't know? Even I know what that is. I'm lame. You look to Cassandra for help, but she's on her phone, typing furiously. You look back at the barista who leans in closer, talking in a whisper. Just some advice. Don't expect anything else. Huh? This is just making you even more confused. What's going on? I get girls here all the time. Cassandra brings them over after a night in, treats them to breakfast, and, and that's it. The girls think they can get to be more than just a one night stand to her, but it only ends up with them having heartbreak. Don't make the same mistake. She's a huge flirt. Don't expect her to settle down. Your head is reeling at this. You had no idea Cassandra had this sort of reputation. It's not like you're planning on dating or anything. You're barely even friends at this point. Before you can think of a response to Elena, Cassandra swoops in, putting an arm around your shoulder. Talking ill of me again. She doesn't seem the least bit offended and instead acts, instead affects a mock pout. I thought we were friends. Uh, just trying to prevent another incident like last time. 
<coughs> Don't worry. She gives you a squeeze and looks at you. We're only working as work partners on a massive project. Nothing's gonna happen between us. Elena does not look convinced. Uh-huh. Elena turns to you. You let me know if she misbehaves or breaks that promise. I'll take away her caffeine excess. Cassandra gasps loudly at this. You wouldn't dare. As I continue to pick her like only friends can, you look at the menu. What should you choose? Let's get some with sprinkles. And... A bagel. Coming right up. You may patiently wait for the food and drink to arrive. When it does, Sandra pays for it with what you notice to be a black card. Wow. How much money does she have? Well, if her mother can afford to fund a theater, they must come from a family with money. Uh, thank you for buying me food and coffee. It's not a big deal, really. I have to get back to my apartment. I will see you. I will see you soon, okay? She bids you goodbye and you catch Elena watching you with a raised brow. It all lies on me. A week flies by before you even know it. Cassandra hasn't texted you since the cafe. You're worried that something might be wrong. Yeah, know that feeling. Several times, you hesitantly hover your finger over her phone number to check in on her, but you never go through with it. Then, on week two of radio silence, she finally texts you. Start of your chat with Cassandra. Good news! I've made an announcement that we're looking for actors. Auditions are going to be next week, and I want you to be there helping me to determine who's running the cast. <laughs> okay. You immediately type a response back. Are you sure you want me to help? I'm not a theater major like you. I've often found that sometimes people who are far removed from topic can offer a fresh perspective on things that said. Of course I will make the final decision. Also, sorry about caps lock. I'm excited. Okay, let me know what time the auditions will be, and I'll be there. Oh, you can scroll, that's fun. I have to click the bottom. Cassandra's enthusiasm is infectious, even through the phone, and you feel a small spark in your chest grow. It's Patrick again! And again! And a goat! And oh, look at him! That's a fun bear. Oh, this whole place is cute. Got some incense. Some skateboards. Dude, are we a skater boy? Will we say see you later, boy? Are we not good enough for Cassandra? <laughs> your roommates notice your reaction and are actually curious about it. What's got you smiling? You see both her and Danielle are looking over at you, waiting for your answer. You haven't realized it, but you have a wide grin on your face right now. You put your phone away. The project I'm working on with a friend is finally underway. What project? What friend? Spill the deets! She sits up from how she had been lounging on the chair, pretending to do her work at her desk. The main stage production of Romeo and Juliet. You have an idea? Why don't you try out for it? And she shakes her head. Yeah, my schedule's pretty booked all the time. She casually flips through a pink planner where drinking is scribbled across the week in bold letters. Yep, busy with important stuff. Do you want to join me with my week schedule? I'm always happy to go with someone, and you need to get out of your room more. Um... I'm worried that if we don't... Um... I'm worried it's going to be like a choice. Uh, I'm worried how serious this choice is. Okay, so if we go with Angie, are we gonna get like too drunk and miss the auditions with Cassandra? Because I really like doing Cassandra's voice. It's a very easy voice to do. Angie's is also a pretty easy voice to do. I'm not super attached to any of them. I'm definitely not Angie. More Cassandra than Angie. Um, so I'm worried I'm making the pause. Okay. If this was me, I would accept the offer. I think that's the way I'm gonna go. Uh, sure, I'd love to come with you sometime. Great, you won't regret it. I'll pass on auditioning too. You'll be working with Cassandra 
And I know how my sister gets her introduction season. How'd you know I was working with Cat? Wait, what? Your eyes go wide. Cassandra Dimitrescu is your sister? Daniela tips her head and gives you a look as if this should be obvious. Duh. You're Daniela Dimitrescu? <laughs> yep, yeah, that's me. You give Daniela a good look over. She's laid back and so chill that it seems impossible for her to be related to Cassandra. There's a ball of energy and about to explode at any moment. And then I have one more sister, named Bella, who's on the student council. Now you're curious about what Bella's like, and about the student council. Now I'll be rooting for you to get this show on the road. Cassandra can be a handful and very demanding. So don't take it personally if she gets standoffish. <laughs> Sometimes she needs a good smack on the head to deflate her ego and get her back down to earth. Daniela laughs at this. She speaks with affection, so you know she's not entirely serious. Daniela gets up. I'm entirely serious. I almost forgot. I have to meet up with some friends. We're gonna go skateboarding. Angie, you wanna come? Nah, I don't like your friends. They're so rowdy. Daniela turns to you. So, do you wanna come? Um, yeah, I, I, like, I'm bad at saying no to people. Even in a video game. I'll text you time. I'll text you and we can set up a time. I'll text you and we can set up a time. Daniela leaves after grabbing her skateboard. You take your book bag and go to the library to do some work before class. Another week passes and it's time for auditions. Cassandra calls you so you can meet up to start them. You can see the line of people waiting to go out the door. You can see the line of waiting people going out the door. This seems like it's gonna be a long evening. The line outside looks crazy? Looks crazy. How are you even gonna manage seeing everyone? Cassandra pats the giant Gary container she had filled. I brought lots of coffee to get us through this. She smiles and turns to, to look at the stage, almost seeming to speak privately to herself. Despite them leaving and trying to scare people away from me, I still have such a huge turnout. You overhear her saying this, but decide not to comment further on it. You take your seat, and Cassandra is the first person to come into the room. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Hopefully, that doesn't pick up well. Uh, frazzled and feel like your soul's been trained out through your eyes. You sit at the table like a limp piece of lettuce. Cassandra has not lost her pep one bit. In fact, she looks refreshed by the process. Or maybe it's a half gallon of coffee she's consumed. We saw a lot of students with potential today. Who do you think should join the cast? Um, pick five from the list. I don't know any of these people. Um, Casey. I I know a Casey. Casey does the artwork for the channel. I commissioned them occasionally to do so. Uh, Jasmine. That's a good Disney princess. So is Cinder... Aren't... What are the more candidates? MJ? Ariana? Great, those are all great choices. Now the cast is finally coming together. Now, uh, what now? What steps do we take? Now all that remains is to decide who is going to play as who. You can leave that to me. What the two of us can do together next is get our costumes ready. This is going by so fast. Since I know for certain that I'm Juliet and you're going to be my Romeo, we can head over to the theater costume department and get outfitted. The way she calls you my Romeo makes your stomach flip pleasantly. You know she doesn't mean anything by it, but it makes you feel special. You follow her as she leads the way down the hall, down several flights of stairs to the costume department. Opening the door to the room reveals a room covered in fabrics. Piles and piles of it lay on the tables, and they're heaped up on the sides. Coats and dresses hang half haphazardly on the hangers. And is that a bra hanging from the ceiling light? Giselle, look here! The room is empty when suddenly one of the piles of clothing starts to shake. A person erupts with it from a loud yawn. A small girl with curly hair and a pair of glasses on her nose 
and another pair hanging around her neck on a chain emerges. What is it? Don't be so obtuse. I'm only ever down here for one thing, and that is clothing. Priscilla gives Cassandra a look. I would beg to differ. The amount of times I've caught you down here, very much doing the opposite of wearing clothing with your friends. Cassandra loudly interjects with a bit of unease. Anyways, can you do measurements for us? We need our outfits to be of utmost quality. This is that Romeo and Juliet play you won't shut up about. Yes, and it's going to be production of the year. Giselle looks unimpressed. You say that about every production. Am I wrong? Giselle begrudgingly concedes. No. So, let's get to it. Cassandra claps her hands together. You and Cassandra spend about an hour down there, allowing Giselle to do her work. Tongue sticking out while she intensely focuses, she uses her measuring tape to take measurements of everything. From the length of your arms to the space between your toes. Cassandra can see you're being overwhelmed by all this. She shoots you a wink and a smile and informs you Giselle is professional and does stellar work with outfits. After Giselle is done measuring, she stands and ponders you, hand on chin, for so long you begin to feel like you have offended her. Then she turns and stares at Cassandra. Cassandra is not bothered by this. She even playfully strikes a few silly poses towards Giselle's deep look of concentration. <coughs> I'll have the outfit done in a few weeks. Perfect. Thank you, Giselle. I'll see you then. The two of you bid Giselle goodbye, and as you're leaving the room, you spot Giselle diving back into her pile of fabrics, mumbling to herself as she looks for something. I know today has been a long day. You can head back to the dorms. I'm going to stay up and work on the cast and script. The two of us need to run some lines together. You're a good Romeo, but you could be even better. Sure. You know Cassandra's intense about acting, so you're not surprised to hear she wants you practicing already. I'll text you when and where. Alright. Alright, um, can't wait. Awesome. I love your enthusiasm. I wish more people could be like you. Running through my mind. From the top. Internally, you groan. Again? You just finished your lines a second ago. The two of you have been reading for the past three hours. You're reading from Romeo while Cassandra reads for the other characters and all the scenes in order to help you flaunt your role better. You're feeling a bit tired and thirsty, your voice starting to go hoarse. You guessed that Cassandra would be intense, but this is just more than you'd expected. She's not lost any of her energy, still going strong since the morning. How's your energy looking? Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's say we're tired. Really? Fine, I guess. I forget not everyone has my stamina and dedication. She gives you a five-minute water break before she launches into reading lines again. In love? Out of love? Out of a paper where I am in love? Alas, Alas, that love, so gentle in his view, should be so tyrannous and rough and proof. Hint, if you don't know, consult your script in the diary. Um, why such, why such is love's transgression, griefs of mine own lie heavy in my breast, which thou wilt forget to have it pressed with more of thine, this love that ha, this love that Thou hast shown doth add more grief to too much of mine own. Uh, diary. Um, alas, I love whose view is muffled still. Where shall we dine, homie? What fray was here? And tell me not, for I have heard it all. He has much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, a rolling love, but a loving hate? Oh, anything of nothing this first create. Oh, heavy lightness, serious vanity. The shape and chaos of well seeming forms. Heather, lead, bright smoke, cold fire, sick health. Still waking sleep, that is not what this is. 
This love for Fieline, that feel no love in this. Dost thou not laugh? Oh, no, cause I rather weep. There is a knock on Cassandra's door. She pauses and puts her script down, quickly smoothing down the wrinkles on her shirt, though there are none, and pushing a strand of hair back into place. Is she expecting someone? Who's she getting ready for? And, oh, are you getting jealous? But you don't own a monopoly on her time, nor her friendship. You try to push those ugly feelings away, yet still you hold your breath when she opens the door. Hello? There are three women standing outside her door. I recognize two of them from the auditions. Are they here to talk about the play with Cassandra? OMG, Cassandra! Ah! She squeals in a high pitch that makes her ears hurt. Cassandra must have ears of steel, for she doesn't even wince despite the close range. We're so excited to be working on this play with you! Totally excited. She nods her head. We're ready to dedicate our bodies to long hours of rehearsal. She bats her eyes. Why does her tone sound so salacious? You don't like that. Just say the word and grin your every beck and call. She leans forward, coyly wrapping a strand of hair around her finger. I'm so happy to be working with you on this. I've heard about your productions, and this is such a great opportunity to help catapult us into stardom by your side. I'm glad you are all excited for this. I will let everyone know through email what the next steps will be. Cassandra seems unfazed by this sort of behavior. She is probably used to dealing with people who only care about her, about the fame her name brings. You could just text us. Here's our numbers. She hands over a slip of paper with the numbers on it. Cassandra takes it without looking and places the paper into her pocket. Thank you. Look forward to my emails. I have to get back to reading lines now. Cassandra pointedly stresses the word emails. It seems to go right over the fans' heads. Practicing already? Wow, you are really intense when it comes to theater. You must be intense in other ways, too. She gives a she gives a wistful sigh. That I am. The three girls all giggle. You can feel unease sitting heavily in your stomach. At least one of them is sitting on Cassandra, right in front of you. You know, Cassandra has a reputation for being flirty, but seeing it happen in real time hits differently. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to finish up with Romeo. And who's Romeo for this play? The three of them crane their heads in and notice you. You don't miss the lab. You wiggle your fingers in awkward greeting. Hello. I don't know you, and like, I know everyone. Why is some unnamed freshie playing Romeo? You can do better, Cassandra. That sets your teeth on edge. Who the hell does this woman think she is to be behaving so rudely to you? What do you do? Um. Yeah. Let's not flip her off. That seems. Too aggressive. Abs I'm not. Def I'm not gonna not defend myself. Let's brag a little. Uh, they glance at Cassandra, who is arched the brow at them, and they quickly shake their heads no. Sorry, Cassandra. We weren't trying to insult you or anything. Uh, anyway, we should get going for now. We have class soon. They all wave goodbye, and Cassandra closes the door on them. She turns to look at you and notices a downward expression that you feel to hide. What's wrong? Eh, yeah, let's, let's be honest with her. Those, those girls are such bitches. Hello, well, I've expected to hear such strong language from you. And yes, they are annoying, but you can't let that kind of stuff bother you. I won't have you ruining the protection just because you don't like them. You need to suck it up. Everyone hates everyone a little by the time the play is done. I think I'm gonna go and get lunch. I'm hungry and thirsty. Cassandra glances at her phone. I keep forgetting that time flies when you're having fun. She smiles at you. Go eat. I'll see you soon, my star. Her calling you, my star, will never cease to make her chest feel warm. You bid her a goodbye and leave her dressing room. Oh my god, it's the... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's the umbrella logo. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but if you look at the top of the stage, uh, where the curtain, top of the curtains, where the uh, in the middle, it's, that's the umbrella logo from Resident Evil. That's that's cute. I wonder if there's been others that I've missed. So far, I've only noticed Patrick's. Make it through the backstage area, only getting lost once in the maze of it. My hand reaches around the corner and grabs you. You yelp, but no one's trying to hear it. You come face to face with none other than the stand from the floor. Um... Rebecca scoffs. Who do you think you are, getting preferential treatment from Cassandra? We've been her number one fan since forever ago, because she's so gorgeous and talented and a leech. And a leech like you just attaches itself to her side with no shame? You're so ugly, too. Like, ew. I bet you don't even brush your teeth. She jabs a finger at your shirt. You should be embarrassed to be anywhere next to Cassandra with those clothes. What lame insults, but you know the threat behind them is real. Defend yourself. You know what? Cassandra taught me a valuable lesson. We're gonna... we're gonna be nice. Really? Okay, is all you have? Not only are you ugly and poor, you're also stupid. What do you even want from me? Isn't it obvious? Stay away from her and the show. And we won't bother you. Simple enough. Why does it bother you so much that I'm playing Romeo? If you try to get rid of me, they'll just find another Romeo to play the role. Rebecca scoffs. I take your place. Her lackeys are their heads. It seems she's the head honcho of this weirdo club. She is a much better actress than you. So, we're giving you a choice. You either resign quietly, or we will ruin you. Why are these guys, like, the most stereotypical bullies ever? Oh, gosh. I... <laughs> it's... It... I didn't realize people were going to be mean to me. I thought I was just going to flirt with vampires. I didn't realize I had to deal with, like, people who haven't matured past high school. Matured past high school. They look serious and slightly psychotic. What can you do? No, I'm not backing down. If you think I'm going to give up so easily, you're mistaken. I am going to stay by Cassandra's side as Romeo, and you're not going to scare me away. You should have given up when you had the chance. Get ready, because this isn't going to end well for you. Alright, legally belong. Jeez. They turn on their heels and walk away. You watch them go, rage and hurt swirling inside of you. You never expected to find yourself in such a situation, but here you are. And all you can do is remain strong now and hope the situation blows over soon. I just realized I should have... Is it wrong to call that tattoo a tramp stamp? Is that... Is that an incorrect term? Oh well. You toss and turn at night, unable to sleep. When you do fall asleep, it's fitful, filled with feelings of distress. You finally give up on sleep at 2am and pull out your phone. You look at it before opening up the chat function and messing Cassandra. You need some pe you need some comfort and you know she won't be asleep at this hour. Your roommates, well great people, are sleeping right now. Daniela is snoring, drool coating her pillow. Angie is mumbling, hey, Macarena, in her sleep and dancing to some music she can only, only she can hear. Hey, Cassandra, what's up? You send a message to Cassandra and immediately you get a response back. Hey, you're not sleeping now. They po they night project? Does she never night text in all caps? You want to do yourself before typing a response? Um, what do I, I don't know, to text. Just wanted to see what you were up to? Just can I ask you something? Um, you know what, I think, yeah. Can I ask you something? Oh boy, this gives me flashbacks to when all my hookups wanted to talk to me. What's up? Blunt. Look, I know you told me not to worry about those stands of yours, but I am. Why? They threatened me if I didn't leave the role. They did? When and how? I'm gonna have a word with them. 
They can't do that. Sincere up, do you want to come over to my apartment? We could talk. You bolt up in bed, eyes going wide. Invitation to Cassandra's place? You type back a quick yes and jump out of bed, quickly getting changed. She texts you her address and you show up in front of her on campus apartment a few moments later. Oh, well, there he is again. Such a lovely little dude. Wednesday, reference. Is that supposed to be Dimitrescu? Oh, I was not reading. The light goes on inside and the door opens to reveal Cassandra on the other side. Come on in. Okay, so is she like... I guess she must live by herself. Whoa! Look at it, like, sight. That's so cool. There's Pomzilla again. I love the backgrounds, man. That's probably... That's, I don't... They're so charming. You follow her up the stairs to the second floor of the building. Also, the character art is really good, too. I should also point that out. You follow her up the stairs to the second floor of the building. She takes you inside her apartment. The kitchen, living room, and dining room are all in one big room with open walls. There's a door ajar that leads to a blue-tiled bathroom and a shut door that must lead to the bedroom. Wow, oh, this place is nice. Thank you. I decorated it all myself. You look at the decor. There's playbills framed on the walls along with posters of famous actors and actresses. There's potted plants taking up the space on the window sills and the coffee table. Comfy blankets and pillows are placed on the couch. There are a few brown throw rugs on the floor. It looks very homely. Not something you'd expect you would have expected of Cassandra. She had a very big personality and you expected bright colors and loud prints. Maybe even the whole place decked out like Hollywood in gold and black. Make yourself comfortable. Then, you can talk. You sit down on the biggest couch and pull the blanket over yourself. Cassandra busies herself in the kitchen. You watch her, admiring her as she works. And when she is done, she brings you a steaming mug of hot cocoa. Hot chocolate makes everything better. She takes a seat next to you. I'm surprised, it's not ha I'm surprised this doesn't have any caffeine in it. Mine does. But I figured you wouldn't want some in yours, so spill. We can talk about what's bothering you. We can talk about something else. Let's request something else. Can we do something else? Like what? I don't know. You can just watch a movie? Sure. Let me turn on one of my favorite movies of all time. Is it Titanic? Why would you think that? You have a framed movie poster of it over on the doorway. Cassandra shakes her head. I was in love with one of the actors when I watched it. Rose was how I found out I was into women. Then what is your favorite movie? With a secretive smile, Cassandra pops in the DVD and hops, to, hops onto the couch next to you, wrapping the other half of the blanket around herself. Your eyes go wide when you see what appears on the screen. <laughs> I just referenced that movie! Also, um... She does barrel pink and legally blonde. Yes, she does. <sighs> that takes me back. It's such a good film. And I thought you'd be more to avant garde films. The ones with limited screenings that play in different languages. Cassandra wrinkles up her nose. Does anyone actually like those? They're so pretentious. That's what I've been saying. She pauses, curious. What's your favorite film? Um, my answer is none of these options. I don't, I guess I don't have one. I'm sure you haven't seen the movie to move you yet. We will have to fix that. The two of you watch the movie together. Cassandra begins to quit the movie line for line until you have to shush her so you can enjoy the movie in peace. She gets up halfway to make microwave popcorn and the two of you devour it all within minutes of it being made. Eventually, you begin to feel relaxed, and the lack of sleep is starting to catch up with you. Your eyes begin to droop, and you don't try to stop them. Ah! A loud child pulls you out of sleep. The movie isn't now, and the screen's blank. So, it could have been the movie, but it caused that noise. Her heart is racing in your chest, and you look over to check on Cassandra. She's fallen asleep. This is the first time you've ever seen her asleep. She doesn't look peaceful. 
her face crunches up and she flails out a leg that almost hits you. She screams again. I feel like we kind of got to wake her up, right? Yeah, she needs to sleep. She screams once more, then jerks awake, panting hard. She looks around wildly, as if confused by where she is. Are you okay? S sorry. She's stuttering. She must be badly shaken. Her cheeks are flushed, as if she's embarrassed by all this. I didn't mean to scare you. Hey, I'm just worried, is all. What happened? Cassandra runs a hand through her hair and swells loudly. She doesn't look at you as she speaks. Ah, I have a nightmare disorder. Whenever I go to sleep, I only ever have unpleasant dreams. It gets really bad sometimes. When I hear that, I can scream my head off when I sleep or kick and punch anyone around me by accident. It's why my mom got me my own apartment, so I don't wake up roommates from my screaming. Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry. Is there anything I can help? I can do to help? Cassandra chuckles ruefully. Not sleeping helps. It's why I chuck back all that caffeine. I stay awake as long as I can, and then when my body can no longer take it, I fall asleep. So, not a vampire. My bad. Sorry for assuming. It's an ass out of you and me. Mostly me. And because I'm so tired of so tired out, I don't have nightmares then. Today, I didn't mean to fall asleep, but it was so comfy by his side. I think a doctor would help? None of them have. It's just something I have to live with. Fair enough. The trauma? What the f- you're, you're getting a- You're pushing your boundaries, old little man. Even I'm aware of that. Maybe it's a form of PTSD? Cassandra shakes her head no. No, I just got the unlucky end of the stick. It could be worse. She looks at the clock. Well, it's time for me to go to my 7 a.m. class. Feel free to stay here until then, but I have to go. You don't like leaving a conversation like this. It's a sensitive and important topic. You feel like you got a glimpse of Cassandra that she tries to hide from others. She packs up her books into her shoulder bag, still not looking at you. I won't tell a soul about this. Thanks, it's... It's just embarrassing. I feel like a five-year-old that has to ask mom and dad to check the monsters under the bed. It's nothing to be embarrassed by. She shoots you a grateful smile, but it's clear she wants this topic dropped, so you drop it for now. I'll see you later, okay? This weekend we're officially going to start our rehearsals, so get ready to be early. She leaves the apartment and you decide you might as well too. You turn off the TV, fold the blanket, and wash the dishes. Then, you head back to your dorm. I wonder if that girl literally was inspired by, um... Oh my god, what's her name? Oh, I don't remember the main character from Legally Blonde's name. No! Danielle is up at this time. She's in the middle of doing calf stretches when she sees you come in. Someone was busy last night. It was a lucky person. She brings on you and you blush. You will most certainly not be sharing with her what happened with Cassandra. Nothing much. I went to bed, woke up, and remembered I had something unfinished left to do, so I raced over to the library. Uh-huh, sure. Keep your secrets, then. We'll find out one way or another. You roll your eyes at her. I'm not asking about your personal love life. That's because I overshare it. Please don't. Is that it? Did I do the demo? Presented to you by... Teammate. Hey, yeah. Is that a reference to one of the games? I don't think so. I'm a, I'm a big Resident Evil fan. Uh, I love all the games, except for the ones that suck. Um, so this was, this was definitely a first in my Resident Evil history. I had fun though. Honestly, that shit was cute. Um, there's other endings? I guess, probably. I know there's another person to pursue. Yeah, that's... It's definitely enough to where I want to see how the story would continue. Um, uh, but that's it.
for today's episode. Bit of an interesting one. Um, let me know if you want to see the other route. <laughs> I didn't mean to do all of this in one go, but here we are. So if you want to see... Uh, I think... I forget who the other one is. Uh, another... I saw it earlier, and I recognize the name of the one. I'm like, oh, we can date that one. I forget, I forget who it is. Either way, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you've watched this long, thanks. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed the demo, and maybe when the game comes out, you'll play it yourself. I'll definitely be playing it, or maybe I won't. I probably will. I want to. There's um. I clearly put a lot of effort into this, and. Uh, well, I think the whole thing with the bullies is a little, was a little silly. It, it was really fun. It, it was really, I uh, just, it's, it's just some good lighthearted fun. Reading along was, was a pleasure, so. Um, I, yeah, my name is Robin, I'm from Channel Spellbinder, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Maybe I won't, that's, it's mostly up to you. A little up to me, but mostly up to you. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Eh, goodbye.